Um, the first thing that I am picking up here from this spread is um, I feel like there's somebody around you that is requiring a lot of attention or they are doing a lot of attention seeking. And um, I feel like for you, some of them could be co-workers, some of them could be children. If you are in a co-parenting type of a situation, it could be uh, your significant other's uh, child or your boyfriend, your girlfriend's child. What I'm feeling is there is this person that is that that keeps coming at you, and I feel like the attention seeking is um, is due to neglect. Okay, so like they're not getting enough attention. They're um, they they need a lot of stimulation. It's like their mind is running a mile a minute, and they need to be entertained. They need to be um, their their energy needs to be channeled to some type of a um, an activity or something else. Um, they need to be able to focus, but I feel like they're they're not getting enough stimulation from their environment, so they're constantly coming to you. They're constantly um, like, I look at this, look at that, or like you know, uh, trying to grab your attention when you are deep in thoughts, when you have things that you need to take care of, when you have you know your own responsibilities that you need to take care of. I see a person with two children. One of them could be yours. The other one could um, be your significant others. And I feel like you don't want to overstep your boundaries by disciplining the child. Um, so I see like one child belongs to you and another child that belongs to somebody else. You don't want to overstep your boundaries. And so you're trying to figure out the right way to compromise and you're trying to figure out the right way to give the child what the child needs, but at the same time, um, preserving or maintaining your peace of mind. So I feel like you're straddling a very thin line here uh, when it comes to boundaries, when it comes to whose responsibility is it? Is it my responsibility or somebody else's responsibility? And so that's for those of you who are dealing with children. I also feel like there is somebody in your work environment that's doing this too. So this could be a child or a coworker or somebody in your work environment that um, I'm sensing that they take a long time to do things. They're, they're lacking in self-confidence and they constantly have to come to you to either get your attention Look at what I'm doing. Look at what, what projects I'm assigned. Do you feel like I'm doing this the right way? So it's this constant pestering. They don't see it as being a nuisance, but I feel like from your peace of mind, for, for, from your perspective, um, you don't want to be rude. You don't want to, you know, just brush them off. So then you kind of entertain whatever it is that they're telling you. And then I see you quickly turning around and going back to your work, focusing on the things that you're doing. And then I see them coming back when you're like, you know, really deep in thoughts and they're doing the same thing. Um, it would be really good for you to draw clear boundaries with this person if it is an adult and a coworker. Obviously, with children, we have to utilize a different tactic. But if this is a coworker, um, definitely preserve just for your productivity, just for your peace of mind. You need to draw very clear boundaries and you need to tell that person, hey, I'm working on something right now. Can this wait? And I feel like if you keep doing that, they're going to get the hint. Okay. So if you want to be, um, if you don't want to be mean, you definitely can keep telling them, I'm working on something right now. Can this wait? And then, you know, if you do it like three or four times, they'll get the hint and then they'll gradually learn to leave you alone. Okay. Or at least they'll learn that they should approach you when you're not busy. Okay, so that's something you need to actively do for this week. Um, the person that's doing this, they obviously, you know, they're not getting enough attention in their environment. And so they, they're going to resort to this behavior. It's attention-seeking behavior, and I feel like you don't need to feed into it. Uh, what I'm also seeing right now as well is... Um, for some of you, there are some big trips planned and we have a lot of people going on vacation and things like that because we are uh, coming into the holiday season here in the United States. Um, I see you talking, um, socializing and texting, emailing, calling a lot of people in your vicinity. They could be, you know, um, 
far further away from you, like in a different state, in a different city. So I see you doing a lot of um, doing a lot of phone tag and trying to get a group of people in order to do something, in order to um, come to to a, a destination to meet up for a trip or to meet up and reunite. And I'm feeling like um, I'm seeing a reunion with either people that you that have been significant to you. You might have been co-workers in the past and also friends. I'm also seeing like uh, gatherings as it relates to family. I'm also seeing attending weddings and things like that, like um, a wedding in the springtime even. And so there's a lot of these uh, conversations, messages uh, related to travel, related to let's all meet up at this destination. Let's all meet up to go to this place in about four months time. And so that's going to bring us into, you know, the very beginning, like March of um, next year for some type of a big reunion. Um, I also feel like the message here is for you to take stock of what you have and be appreciative and be very grateful of what you have. And um, I see some of you are in a situation where, you know, the for those in relationships, your relationship partner, your relationship overall seems to me to be very, very stable. But there seems to be some type of an outside attraction that you might have with another person and I feel like it's detracting you from appreciating everything that your relationship partner has to offer so somebody outside of the relationship is soliciting you it's like really sparking your interest it's somebody you have a lot of uh, strong attraction towards and it's also somebody that um, knows you're not single and available, and yet they're still flirting with you. They're still showing their intentions. They're still showing their feelings towards you. And so do what you may, but I feel like this is something they're aware that you're in a relationship, but they are still, you know, um, they're, they're still attempting to get your attention, okay? So just be careful about that. Um, I see for some of you, it is a co-worker, and it, it's separate from the first co-worker that I'm seeing that's pestering you. This is somebody else. This is a new energy, and this seems to me like uh, two separate people. And you want to be a little bit careful about that as well, because once again, they know you are not available. So for from my perspective, I feel like it might just be them trying to they're looking at you like it's a challenge because you're not available you're not single and yet they're trying to you know win your affection um so it seems like it's a little bit more self-serving from their end it seems like they're competitive or it seems like they're looking at it as a challenge okay so which means once they attain you they might not stay around so just be careful about that uh, for those who are single, I feel like there is definitely another person that's capturing your attention. Um, some of you might have recently recently left somebody behind, and I feel like it was a, quite a painful ordeal. And you're protecting your heart. You are very much, you know, ready to move on. And I also feel like you're no longer giving that past person the, the time of day. Um, I have the world here and um, the little bunny is encased in this bubble. This is protecting, protecting your heart, protecting your emotions, protecting your feelings and not letting the past affect the, the present situation that you're in. And I have a new person that's coming into the picture and I feel like a very strong fire sign vibe with this person. So it could be a Sagittarius, an Aries or a Leo. And this is somebody who um, is very protective of you. Um, they take initiative. They show or shower a lot of love and attention and affection on you. And I feel like they they want a relationship. They want to build. And that's for those who are single. Okay, they want to they want to build the relationship. They want to see how things are going to progress. And I feel like they give you a lot of attention. They um, they come to check up on you. They want to make sure you're okay. And I also feel like they're they're saying things like, 
uh, how are you doing today? How was your weekend? It's like they, they really take the time out of their busy schedule to really connect with you and to ask how things are going and to, you know, show their concern and show their care. This is somebody who's also very um, popular, I feel. They're very work-oriented. Everything that they do, they do with great care and diligence. And this is someone who's also very well-respected in their field. So they have really good work ethics. They are well-regarded. They People generally really like them, so I feel like they're a very popular type of a person. I also feel like there's really strong chemistry between you and this person, and um, they're inching towards you is what I'm, I'm hearing. They're inching towards you, and yet you still have some communication from the past as well, that past relationship that left you very confused, very muddled, and I feel like, you know, um, you might even have some unanswered questions, but at this point, with this new attraction, you don't really care. And you're looking to, you know, um, close the door to the past, even though there were unanswered questions, even though there were things that left you very confused, you're actively moving away from it because you're closing out a cycle. And you're also at a point where, you know, it doesn't matter. It's in the past. I'm going to lay it to rest and I'm just going to move on with my life. So you are definitely moving forward and advancing forward. Um, I also feel as well, there for those of you who have been um, working really, really hard, there is a bonus. There is some type of a major recognition ceremony. So it's like an award ceremony, um, some type of a work situation where there might be a celebration, where there might be like... Um, I see like an achievement award. So they're calling up people uh, to come to the stage and everyone gets like a, not everyone, just the ones that have done a really good job. Everyone gets a certificate. Everyone gets a plaque. Everyone gets a gift. And I see coworkers um, asking one another, what did you get? Can I see it? And vice versa, you doing that to them. So it's a really, really festive type of environment. Um, I feel that's coming through for this week. I'm also feeling as well um, a lot of just good rapport, good group work in the uh, work environment. And I feel like, you know, if you felt like, I don't know, the work is not really exciting. I'm not really sure if I'm progressing. There is a sense of camaraderie here that doesn't, that might not have existed in previous work environment. And I feel like it's uh, it's allowing you to feel that, you know, work doesn't have to be just work. It's the human connections and it's the relationships and it's the, the people that makes it very worthwhile, that makes it very meaningful to, to continue to stay in this work environment. So if you have been, you know, wanting to branch out, I feel like the opportunity might be around for you, especially in 2019. Where you are right now is where you're supposed to be because you're building up a really good rapport with higher management, with colleagues, with coworkers. And I feel that that's what's really driving you, making it really nice for you to want to wake up and go to work every day. It's the human relationships, okay? Um, I'm feeling here that there is going to be a lot of success if you continue to stay where you are. But if you're looking for a change, I also feel there is going to be really good news coming about, especially the next year. Okay, so I see like choices and options that are going to be available for you. If you're looking to branch out in your work sector, and it might be actually really difficult for you to leave the work environment because you're going to really miss the people that you've spent time with and that you really uh, worked with. Um, I keep seeing this element here about a um, either a salary increase or a work increase or like a, it's like your workload might be increasing in either quality quantity or they're getting significantly more difficult because you are increasing as well in your 
it's like getting a promotion. So the work that you do is, uh, you, you get more responsibilities, but I don't feel like it's more responsibilities in quantity as much as it is in complexity. So the work you're being given is going to be a little bit more complicated. It's going to be a little bit harder. So it takes a little bit more time, but I feel like you're being rewarded justly for the work that you do. Um, there's definitely some really good news for you, for those who are looking for work, for those who are looking for clients, for those who are even, um, have even applied, you know, like if you've applied like five months ago, you're getting some, some feedback, you're getting some news, um, in that matter. And I also feel like possibility for many of you to shift into the new job coming into, um, 2019, especially the first four months of 2019, right now um take the time and do your due diligence when it comes to you know dotting your i's crossing your t's and um taking like taking care of things one thing at a time rather than multitasking um don't dash assignments off you know at the last minute um review and proofread everything that you are submitting especially to higher management to higher ups okay um, I've been feeling like in the month of September and October, there's a lot of restlessness with you. There is also apprehension and a little bit of fear. And I feel like for some of you, it's, it's like the uncertainty. Um, I see you submitting things like documents, official documents, legal documents, and you're trying to figure out, you know, what's the outcome are they going to ask me questions? Are there other things I need to submit? So worries over documents that have been submitted. For some of you, it could be housing related. For others, it could be marriage. For others, it could be work related. So whatever documents you've sent out, I, f I see some of you are very worried. Like, did I submit everything? Should I include more? Um, and I also feel worries about like, are they going to investigate further? Are they going to ask me certain questions? So I see that element coming in and I feel like this is the week where things are going to be um, at ease. I see you a lot more emotionally, mentally at ease where you're not really thinking about those things. It's done and over with. And I feel like if it's meant to be, you're just going to go with the, the flow and not worry too much about it. So, I feel like this is a very relationship oriented type of a week. Your relationship with other people, love, coworkers, parents, whatever in whatever capacity, but I feel like the the major emphasis here is on relationships. So the work front is not going to be too busy, it's not going to be too hectic or even difficult, okay? So I hope the reading is helpful for you guys and I wish you all the best. All right, Pisces, take care.